Dear students, I welcome you all for the first session on digital commission practicals. Today we are going to see the practical implementation of pulse code modulation and demodulation. Before going in actual practical implementation, let us try to recap the, the concepts of pulse code modulation and demodulation. Let us see here, I do have here on the board the pulse code modulator and pulse code demodulator. The first block of pulse code modulator is LPF. I am applying signal M of T that, that can be a pure sine wave here for, for demonstration purpose or can be music sig signal, can be speech signal or can be voice signal. This signal is given to this low pass filter. This low pass filter has got a cutoff frequency of FM Hertz. Hope you remember why we are using this low pass filter here. We want to make this signal band limited signal because no time limited signal is band limited. That is why to make the signal band limited, we are using this cutoff, uh, using the filter with a cutoff frequency FM Hertz. The alternative name of this filter is called anti-aliasing filter. Hope you remember that. This anti-aliasing filter is used to make this signal perfectly band limited and then it is given to sample and hold circuit. Essentially, I have got three building blocks of PCM modulator. The one is sampling, quantizing and encoding. You see here, I am first step is sampling. I am using the sampling frequency FS and it has to be greater than twice FM. As per Nyquist criteria, the sampling frequency must be greater than or equal to twice FM where FM being the maximum frequency component present in the input signal. Once I have done the sampling here, I have to go for quantization. What is quantization? Quantization is nothing but approximating the actual sampled value to the nearest possible quantization level. Now here we will select L. This is what L level quantizers and how quantization level L is connect is related to n 2 raised to power n. What is n? n being the number of bits you are represent you are using to represent one quantization level or each quantization level and that is why they are related like this. In our kit we have got 3 bit PCM and 4 bit PCM. For 3 bit PCM the number of quantization level comes to 8 and for n is equal to 4 I get l is equal to 16. You please see here if I am using 4 then l will be 16 and if I am using n as a 3 number of quantization level will be 8. Now I am approximating the actual sample value to one of these 8 quantization levels or one of the 16 quantization level depending on what n you are selected. Then I will encode this signal, this quantized sample signal into as a binary encoder. Okay, it's called M array encoder. It M can be eight, it can be four, but here we will we'll consider only two array encoder. It's called binary encoder. Each quantized sample will be converted into binary bits. If I'm selected n equal to three, I will get three binary bits for each sample. Or if I'm selected n equal to four, then for each quantization, each uh, quantized sample, I will get four bits. Then I will apply parallel to serial converter. Why I need this? Because I don't want to use four channels or four uh, wires to connect from transmitter to receiver. It will be a bulky, it will be a cost ineffective and it will be waste of resources. That is why I will lead here parallel to serial converter. What is what is essentially it have? It, it is having a parallel in serial out shift register. The shift register that you learned in digital electronics at secondary level that circuit can be applied here which will convert this parallel in serial out. Now you understand sample and hold, L level quantizer, ML encoder and parallel to serial converter together this called ADC analog to digital conversion. The process of PCM modulation is nothing but analog to digital conversion because I have got analog signal here 
at this point here i am applying the analog signal and here i am getting the pulse code modulation or binary bits representing this analog signal that is called a analog to digital conversion now let us discuss the mode later obviously whatever operations i am doing at the transmitter end i have to reverse wrap them in the at the receiver you see here i have got serial to parallel converter because i the pcm signal reached to receiver through one channel and i will convert again the serial bits into parallel and i, I will use your serial in parallel out shift register then i again i will use m array decoding this m array decoding as i am using here binary encoder i will use here binary decoder this four binary bits will be represented into one quantized value exactly the reverse thing that we did here here we are doing it this m array decoder will will convert will give me this equivalent quantized voltage for this four binary bits and then the sample and hold circuit will will generate a staircase approximated signal for me like this hope you understand this is a staircase and the step size here okay depending on the quantization level and you understand now i will get here the staircase approximation signal exactly resembling to this input signal then this signal has got higher spectral content because of the nature of this signal okay it consists of a higher spectral higher spectral contents and when i apply it to the pass filter with a cutoff frequency fm with a cutoff frequency fm i will get the smooth signal here like this this lpf will remove the coarseness present in this signal and make it smooth that means the higher spectral content of this signal has got uh, eliminated and signal low pass filter just allow a uh, signal up to the fm frequency are passed here and i will get a smooth waveform here that is called recovered uh, signal or received version of the input signal this is mt m dash t is my received version of my input signal to hope everyone of you understood now the modulator and demodulator now i i i want every one of you uh, let us understand the process of quantization in detail because it is very very important this is a this is the heart of pulse code modulation if you understand quantization process properly and then binary encoding then you can understand this in this whole process so let us come here to understand the quantization process this is quantization process for 2 bit pcm 2 bit pcm means how many number of levels every one of you please tell me four i have got four quantization levels 2 raised to the power 2 means four now you can see which are those level levels you can see i have got 1 2 3 and 4 these are the four levels have to have the separation between two is called delta v you can show here from this point to this point it is delta v the maximum separation between two quantization levels is called delta v and now you understand this whole quantization region is divided into minus 2 hold to plus 2 hold that means xt my input this is my input signal xt is belongs to minus 2 hold to plus 2 hold that means we have we have set we have set this attribute of this quantizer such that which will map our complete signal like this suppose someone speaks above than this value then i will sample all those samples which are going above plus 2 hold will be quantized to this level only to so hope you understand the le quantization levels and the separation between delta v now let us understand closely how quantization process starts you see this is my original signal xt or m of t and then you see here these are the samples 1 2 3 4 5 and you see i have got sampling instances ts 2 ts 3 ts 4 ts 5 ts 6 ts like that now the first sample happens to be at this place at this point of time you see here minus 2 hold minus 1 hold 0 hold 1 hold and 2 hold the exact value the actual sample value for this sample is 0.4 hold 
and now i i want to approximate this point for hold to the nearest possible contraction level so as you are aware of the this middle point 1 2 3 4 are the contraction level where i can say exactly in the middle of this range exactly in the middle of this delta v that means delta v by 2 is my sampling uh, my contraction level now that's why this is you see I, we are we were talking about this sample this sample is exactly contrasted to this 0.5 so though the voltage actual uh, of actual sample is 0.4 but the approximated value will be 0.5 that is called contrasted sample or contrasted sample value the difference between these two the difference between these two is called contrasted error or some sometime called contrasted noise so you can see this the dif difference between these two actual value and approximated value is 0.1 hold that's why here the contraction noise happens to be 0.1 now let us find out what is the maximum then what can be its maximum value the delta v by 2 delta what is delta v delta v is the separation between two levels delta v by 2 is the maximum contraction value that can have here so let us understand for the second sample for second sample at this point of time you see the voltage is here 0.82 hold at this point i do have a 0.82 hold and it is contrasted to again 0.5 you please understand this this is very very peculiar case the sample which is having 0.4 hold also sampled also contrasted to 0.5 and the sample which is which is having a value 0.82 also contrasted to 0.5 because the nearest possible contrasted level for 0.82 is this one i this is not nearest to this one that is why this cannot be contrasted to this one this will be a wrong interpretation in that sense that's why we have to understand the contrasted has to be happen to the nearest possible contrasted level and for point a to this is point 5 and now you see here the noise is more than as compared to this one the noise is more but but nonetheless the maximum contrasted noise here is delta v by 2 and that's how this is how the contrasted process go on now once you understand that these are the actual sample value and this is the contrast sample value and all this uh, readings are in uh, the unit is holds now you please see here now the the next step comes comes to this m array encoding that means binary encoding in this case so we have got two bit pcm so n is two here that's why you see here each contraction level the lowest has given 00 upper 01 10 and 11 So my contraction levels are like this because there are four contraction levels. That's why zero 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 one one zero one one. In actual practical circuits that you are going to implement this uh, this experiment, we'll see here. I do have three bit or four bit. For three bit, I will have zero 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 to one 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 eight levels. For four bit, I will have sixteen levels here. As this sample falls to this point five, and this point five has an uh, uh, encoder output one zero. That's why. now this point for you is approx is is binary coded as 10 this point this point 82 approximate point for you again binary coded at 10 this sample coming at 1.7 hold which which is approximate to 1.5 hold and it is 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 analogous to or is is represented by 11 that is why the output goes outside as a pcm is 11 and hope now similarly you can go to to this point and you can found out the binary encoded output for each contrast value so hope now every one of you understand the contraction process in detail this is the heart of sampling this is this is the heart of pulse code modulation once you understand this then we can go for actual practical implementation now before going on exact on our board or before explaining the board to you i want you to every one of you understand the frame formats that is been used on our board the frame size is used on our board is 16 bits if your n is 3 and no matter n is 4 okay for both the cases your frame is 16 bits now you please understand where you are going to watch or where you are going to observe your binary bits in this pcm format the frame format is like i have got eight high eight ones or these are called synchronization bits which are high level binary it's a high a high level let's say 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 so this eight ones will will be the my synchronization bits okay eight bits high level then i have got two bit low level that is start bits 
and then if you see for three bit PCM here I will get my PCM data my the sample output data 0 0 0 or 0 1 0 we'll see actually on the practical uh, kit how the output comes here and for three bit PCM the this uh, is called stop bits that the size of stop bits are three that means eight bit start eight eight bit synchronization pulse two bit start then data of three bit and then three bit stop bits if you go to four bit PCM in the experiment that you are going to perform here the this is again the synchronization bits are same eight con eight synchronization bits were used here then start bits are two and then we have got here four bits which are representation of actual samples here one two three four and again two stop bits you see the difference here for three bit we are using three bits as stop bits for four bit okay we are we are get only two bit stop bits that is how it is there now how your pcm signal will look like please see this okay if i draw like this i will have this high you see like i will have this high level synchronization pulse of 8 bits then i have got two bits as a start bits going low see i am i am i am changing the time i am doing transition here high to low and then suppose I have a data, suppose I'm talking about the four bit data, suppose I do have one, zero, one, zero like this. And then I have got uh, two stop bits and my data uh, high level sync will start. You please see how I will read this signal now. I will read this eight bit high level sync, then two bit starts, my data is one, zero, one, zero. And from this point onwards, it's a from this point onwards, it is a top bits. So hope you understood how a frame synchronization is been done here in our uh, experiments. Now you understand, you may understand, this is one of the case in practical life, it may be different. That's why, and if you ask me why we did this kind of synchronization, this kind of arrangement here, why don't, why don't you directly get this three bits and four bits and transmit? We want to do synchronization here. Synchronization between transmitter and receiver has to be has to be there for proper synchronization. If proper synchronization is there, then only we can receive bits. Otherwise, bit may get shuffled, bit may get get lost or damaged in some sense. Now, once you understand the frame format used in our kit, three bit and four bit. Okay, let us understand one more thing that the time duration from this place to this is one TS period. In one sampling interval, this is going to happen. So for each sampling interval, okay, the four bits are going to send. So now this will this for next sample, this will be the uh, another such kind of frame will be there. Eight bit high, two bit start like this. It will go on. So hope you understand this. This will get repeated for every TS second. So hope uh, you understand this complete process of. PCM modulation, demodulation, quantization, and uh, that output you are going to observe through pulse code modulation. Thank you.